Hello, in this video I'm going to discuss uh, properties of integrals. Uh, so we'll start out with just some real basic ones. Uh, integrals are additive. Uh, if you have, for example, the integral of uh, x plus 2, uh, that integral is the same as the integral of x plus the integral of 2. I'm going to put some limits of integration on this, and we'll just maybe go from like 0 to 3. So those limits of integration um, will, will match. Um, the reason that this is true is you can see it on the graph. Uh, if you graph uh, the line x plus 2, uh, and... Uh, Here's one, one, two, three, approximately right there. When you go to three here, at the point three comma five. Um, so basically at this figure here, you're looking at kind of an oblique shape where you have a triangle right there, and you have a rectangle. Uh, the rectangle uh, is, uh, and then separately, if you have just the line y equals x, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, you would have this shape where you have just a triangle. Then if you have the line uh, y equals two, Right there, that's just this line. One, two, three. That is the rectangle. So basically what you've done here is you've taken a triangle and a rectangle as integral of x plus 2, broken that up into a uh, triangle uh, separately and a rectangle separately. You're still adding those together. So fair enough. Uh, the same works for subtraction. If this was a negative, then that would be a negative as well. Uh, if you have a constant in your integral, if you have, for example, the integral of 5x, say we do this from negative 2 to, to 5, um, this is the same as 5 times the integral from negative 5, uh, from negative 2 to 5 of x dx. In the same spirit that with derivatives, a constant just kind of hangs out there, remains a coefficient, the same happens for integrals. This is a property that will be extremely useful in some of the techniques we're going to learn for doing integration. Uh, there will be times when you strategically want to bring up, you know, the coefficient in the integral or out of the integral, um, you know, whatever is suitable uh, to make your problem easier. Um, if you take an integral, say, from A to B, f of x dx, uh, you can take the opposite sign and switch the limits of integration, minus b to a, f of x, is the same integral. So if you switch the limits of integration, you switch the sign. Um, that is because when you take the antiderivative of f of x, plug in b minus plug in a, there's a subtraction uh, set up. If you switch the order, then you have to switch the sign to make that subtraction uh, flip the other way as well. I'll just show you a quick example of that. Um, suppose you integrate x from 3 to 5. The antiderivative is x squared over 2. You raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, draw your little line from 3 to 5. So that becomes 25 over 2 minus 9 over 2. As you plug in 5 and square it, plug in 3 and square it, subtract the 2. Um, if you did 3 to 5, subtract 5 to 3, x dx, you would get um, x squared over 2 from 5 to 3. So you would get 9 over 2 minus 25 over 2. That is the opposite of here. The order is opposite. So to fix that, you have to do a minus like that. And so that would correct the order. Uh, so that's a, that's a property that occasionally is useful, not, not 
that often, but definitely um, worth looking at. Uh, another property of integrals is if you happen to integrate over a non-differentiable point, then you have to stop uh, your integral and restart a new one. A great example of that is um, the absolute value function. Let's do a integral from negative 2 to 5, the absolute value function. Um, so let's just look, have a reminder as to what that looks like. Get rid of that. That looks like this. It's a V-shape. Uh, both sides are a slope of 1 and the slope of negative 1. Um, and so what you're going to notice is at 0, this is not differentiable because we have a sharp turn. Sharp turns are not differentiable. That, that point 0 is not differentiable. Uh, and it's because the left and the right side slopes, the left and the right side derivatives don't match. Um, so what you have to do here is you have to take, and, and notice we go from negative 2 to 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and that's because my, so the issue is my, my the non-differentiable point is in my interval. If I was doing this from 1 to 5, it would be no problem at all. So we're going to split this up into two different integrals. Uh, one that goes from negative 2 to 0. And then the other goes from 0 to 5. And notice this is the line positive 1x and then the intercept is 0, so that's just x. This is line negative 1x plus 0, so this is negative x. So to complete this problem, you would have to do both of those integrals separately. Obviously, the integral exists because this is some area right here. And then 5, if I fill that in, that's more area under the curve. So obviously, the area is under the curve. It exists. We just need to find a way to express it. So that's how you do it if you have a non-differentiable point in the middle of your integral. Um, Another property of integrals is that if you have area under the curve, I'm sorry, under the x-axis, it's defined as negative. Um, and uh, that may seem kind of counterintuitive, but um, uh, when we're talking about physical area, obviously it's never negative. But um, when I talk about integral area, um, in area above the x-axis is positive, below the x-axis is negative. We'll get into that later, but, but right now we're just going to kind of introduce that concept. Um, and let's just use a, a periodic function to do it. We'll do sine. Uh, so we're going to say 1 minus 1, 1 pi, 2 pi. This is what sine looks like. So this area is positive. And this is negative. And so if you integrate the curve sine, uh, from 0 to 2 pi, the answer is going to have to be 0. Sorry, there we go. Because the positive area and the negative area cancel out. Um, if you integrate the curve of sine from 0 to 1 pi, that's from here to here. That's going to be a positive region. So that's going to be positive. And if you integrate it from uh, 1 pi to 2 pi sine, it's going to be negative. And I want to just show you um, this real quickly um, on the graphing calculator um, and so you can kind of follow along with me. Uh, now, it is true that you can do uh, definite integrals on the calculator. Uh, it's also essential that you can do them by hand. Uh, so I want you to, to see both for now. But uh, uh, for the graph, you go, if you go to the math menu, uh, go down, function integrate. Uh, you're going to start by putting your limits in, I guess. We'll do 0. 2 pi right there. Inside is sine of x and then dx. And I need to go to mode and just make sure I'm in radians right now because I'm dealing with radians. I am in radians. If it was in degrees, I could switch it over. So we'll quit, hit enter. Sure enough, we get 0. 
if you push second enter and just redo what you just typed and just go over it, all I'm going to do is take out that two pi and make it a one pi. You can see that we get uh, a positive two right there, a positive number. Um, and then if I go down here and go from uh, do second, oops. If I do second enter, I'll just type it again, math, function integrate, uh, we're going to go from 1 pi to 2 pi, sine of x, x, uh, dx, to enter, negative 2. So this is positive 2 and negative 2, and obviously they add together positive 2, negative 2, cancel out. So uh, anyway, that's an exercise for now that you'll see if you're given certain areas on the graph and they say, you know, one area is this number, another area is this number, you know the bottom one is negative, this one's positive, and they can potentially cancel out. That's a, a, a property uh, of integrals. Um, okay. Um, so, one other thing that we need to mention about integrals is uh, going back to the uh, kind of conceptual summation uh, of integrals. There's a couple, there's three different kinds that we need to know about. Uh, and I'm going to just kind of redraw my nice parabola. Um, we have the right hand sum and the left hand sum. That was, uh, I think, pretty clear. So, there's the right hand interval. So maybe there we go. You can see this curve is increasing and decreasing. So some are over guesses, some are under guesses. Uh, I can't make a determination if that's a, this is a right hand sum. Um, uh, I can't tell you if it's an, uh, if it's a over guess or under guess here. Um, if I had made this a left hand sum, uh, we would have had, uh, you know, something like this where we have the left hand corner touches the curve and so forth, left hand sum. What you're going to notice, though, is like with this, really the best option would be if you could draw a little triangle here on top. So that little triangle could kind of really help you fill in that missed area. This little triangle up top could help you fill in that missed area. Um, and uh, it, so if you had a shape that looked like this, that would kind of be the ideal shape rather than just a rectangle. And what you're going to notice is that that triangle the height is the, uh, if you, if you kind of cut it in the middle, you know, I can't automate a triangle, but if you kind of cut this in the middle and take that piece and stick it right there, it becomes a kind of a, a synthetic rectangle, a fake rectangle. And so if you want this little, this little uh, weird shape, this trapezoid, uh, what you can do is what's called a trapezoidal sum, and that's just basically the average of the left hand sum plus the right hand sum, it's over two, so this is the average. The left hand sum plus the right hand sum over two. If you do the left hand sum and the right hand sum, take the left point and the right point over two, you get a, a better estimate. This is, you know, not super, I mean, it, this is on the AP test, uh, it is. Um, but as far as day-to-day -day integration, you know, lots of the time you're just, you're doing the rules and, and, and doing exact integrals, not estimates, but uh, you do need to kind of know as one of the properties of integrals is if you take the right-hand sum and left-hand sum and you average them, uh, you take this height and this height and get that center height, where if you cut off that little triangle and stuck it in right there, you would get a, a rectangle that is actually half the height of the right and the left. Um, so this uh, should wrap up uh, the basic properties of integrals. Um, have a good day. Bye-bye.